Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on assessing and grading soft skills. As part of the GRASS project, we're looking at different ways of assessing and grading soft skills within our school programme. The radio and television broadcasting course here at the school includes the development of audio and visual skills among the students. We decided to include the development of emotional awareness as one of the learning outcomes for the course, for which we would award a digital badge. From the outset, we looked at the learning process through the lens of Cole's experiential learning cycle. At various stages of the learning cycle, data would be collected as evidence of learning. The data would be used for both formative and summative assessment. And while the formative assessment would be used as feedback for both teachers and students, the summative assessment would be used to award the badge. Formative assessments would include the following. KWL. The students would identify what they already know about emotions, what they would like to know about emotions, and also what they have learned in class about emotions. Prior to the presentation to the class, the student would discuss the choice of emotion to be presented to the class and also why they choose this particular emotion. This would allow the teacher and the student to assess at what stage of understanding the student is. To provide further feedback, the class would engage in peer group assessment using the criteria of success identified by the group at the beginning of the learning experience. The first step was to give the students a clear description of the tasks to be completed. Each student is challenged to communicate an emotion of their choice using vision and or sound. They must then present the piece of work to the rest of the class and explain the background to the idea or emotion. The explanation takes place after the presentation and takes the form of a question and answer session. The piece of work can be any combination of any of the following. A still image, a piece of music, a moving image, sound effects, text, performance and so on. Each presentation and discussion will be recorded on video. Next up, we identified the criteria for success. To enhance the learning experience, we employed the learning strategy of brainstorming using Padlet. This offered the students the opportunity to reflect and contribute and discuss what identifies the different emotions. In order to be awarded the Emotional Awareness Badge, each student had to complete the following tasks. They complete an Emotions Pictorial Audio Quiz. This would act as evidence of the level at which the student can identify emotions and differentiate between them. They must also present the emotion to the class and engage in a question and answer session with teachers and peers. The question and answer session will offer the student the opportunity to demonstrate their level of understanding of the emotion being presented. Having collected all this data, we were now able to decide whether or not a student could be awarded a badge by triangulating all the different sources of evidence. Once the teacher has recorded and verified that the student has met the standards for the relevant criteria, the badge can then be awarded. In an attempt to add to the validity of our assessment, we joined with our GRASS partners at the University of Limerick in implementing ACJ, Adaptive Comparative Judgment using the evidence of learning already gathered from the students. The purpose of the ACJ assessment activity is to exercise the judgment of a broader community of experts to validate the assessment data presented by the students as evidence of the soft skill. We will discuss this experience of ACJ in a later video tutorial. The amount of evidence collected is completely up to the teacher, but the more evidence collected, the higher the validity of the assessment. Here at our school, we found that the simpler the assessment related documentation, the clearer the students were on what they had to do. This allowed the student to think about what was important with the guidance of the teacher and their peers, rather than spending their time analyzing a complex assessment document. This led to a more authentic demonstration of the soft skill by the student. In summary, we prepared for our soft skill assessment by putting the following elements in place. The students were given clear information on the tasks before them. 
the criteria for success for each task being assessed were outlined and discussed with the students. All the data collected from the different tasks was triangulated. The badge was awarded. In our next video tutorial, we will look at the assessment of student presentations through adaptive comparative judgment. And we will also look at and compare the impact of both assessment methods used in our application case. Thank you.